According to a national survey, about 80,000 unregistered immigrants are in New Mexico. Ryan Montano takes an in-depth look at how many are in the state's universities illegally. Meet Maria. Maria is a student at the University of New Mexico, and her dream is to become a teacher. And while Maria isn't her real name, she is a real person. She has asked to have her identity concealed because she is one of many students at the University of New Mexico that is undocumented. She has no social security card, no work visa, and no legal status as a citizen of the United States. They basically don't have an identity. I imagine myself applying for something and not being able to work on it because I don't have like a social security number. So that kind of gets me mad because it's not fair. A former undocumented student who goes by the alias Humvee says that his illegal status made it hard for him to fit in. It feels like discrimination still because there in the U.S. they called me Mexican as well. And like I feel like I don't really have a home to go home to because if I'm in Mexico they call me that. If I'm in the U.S. they call me that. So I don't really know where to fit in anymore. When asked how students are able to legally attend UNM, the university's admissions department declined to speak on camera. However, Enrollment Management Vice President Carmen Brown issued a statement saying, quote, UNM does not deny admission to students based on immigration status. Under Senate Bill 582, New Mexico state law is very clear that a public post-secondary educational institution shall not deny admission to a student on account of the student's immigration status, end quote. In addition to enrollment at the university, Brown's statement says that all students are eligible for state funding, such as the New Mexico Lottery Scholarship. Federal funding, however, is off limits because their parameters require U.S. citizenship. Uh, they can't qualify for work study. They can't get a Pell Grant. Uh, they can't get a student loan. I mean, anything that the federal government supports, uh, they can't qualify for that. The most that they were able to qualify for here in New Mexico is the lottery. Veronica Mendez Cruz is the director of El Centro de la Raza, a UNM program aimed at helping Latin students. Our main charge is to assist our Latino student throughout their whole experience here at the university. So we do a little bit of everything. Uh, we're, our approach is very holistic. We cover everything from assisting them in trying to get their documentation, um, as well as trying to help them get any kind of academic type support. Mendez Cruz says that although her program doesn't work with every Latin student at UNM, several undocumented students have sought the help of the organization. I can tell you that out of the center alone, we've worked with a good 40, 50 of our uh, immigrant population, our undocumented immigrant population, that utilize El Centro in general. Uh, there are many more students that are attending the university but not necessarily come to El Centro. Because UNM doesn't require citizenship documents to enroll, it is impossible to gauge how many students are actually undocumented. For Maria, her illegal status has made her personal and academic life extremely difficult. It's hard because cause I'm helping the school right now and I'm not able to like actually work as an assistant in school because I don't have a social security number. I'm there as a community service and I know if I had uh, documents, I would be able to apply for broader scholarships. Even though I'm not paying more for being undocumented, it is still a lot. So I'm like relying on the few scholarships that I have. The only choice we have is just being hopeful for the future. That something hopefully is going to be done before we graduate. And that something could come from the United States Senate. Introduced in March, the Development, Relief, and Education for Alien Minors, or DREAM Act, could potentially give students like Maria the chance to become an American citizen. The DREAM Act is legislation that uh, we've tried to pass as part of immigration reform that says uh, uh, kids who come here to this country illegally with their parents uh, uh, and who live there essentially their uh, entire lives here, if they graduate from high school, they then can obtain uh, conditional legal status that then would allow them to go on and, and either serve in the military or uh, achieve uh, some higher education and if they do one of those two then they would be able to get permanent legal status and uh, be positioned where they could eventually apply for citizenship. 
While New Mexico Senator Jeff Bingaman says that the legislation is receiving support from both parties, the chances of the bill becoming law are low. Well, the bill is bipartisan. Uh, Senators Durbin and Luger are the prime co-sponsors prime co of the bill, and quite a few of us are co-sponsoring it. I am as well. Um, I think realistically it's not going to be enacted. My guess is that it's not going to be enacted until we are able to enact a broader uh, immigration reform bill. I hope that happens later this year. It's not clear exactly when it will happen. I know President Obama wants us to deal with it uh, later this year. If the DREAM Act fails to pass, Maria will still face the threat of deportation, not only on her behalf, but her family's as well. That's a thing we actually talk about, and I think my life will change dramatically. I mean, if my parents will get um, deported, so if that happens, I think I will have to drop out of school and start working. And probably my sister too. I don't even want to picture it. And this is a scenario that UNM journalism professor Richard Schaefer is all too familiar with. Uh, what you see as a professor is you see this really bright student go to class for two months, be doing very well, and then boom, they're gone. And you don't see them again for a year. What happened? The person who they were living with went back to Mexico or went back to El Salvador or got deported and their life was in total chaos. United States Border Patrol Public Affairs Officer Doug Mosier says that while the organization does not patrol academic institutions, they do apprehend students. Obviously we don't patrol uh, schools or churches and public institutions and things like that looking for illegal migrants. Typically, the, the students that we encounter illegally in the United States, um, more often than not, are cases where they have overstayed their visa. Uh, that will expire and they will end up uh, staying in the United States anyway. And of course, it becomes unlawful at that point. And if we encounter that situation, then we will apprehend them and ultimately you know, send them back to their native countries. Mosier also added that while America was established by immigrants, those immigrants were lawful individuals. Well, we are a nation of immigrants, but we are a nation of lawful immigrants. And uh, the thing is, you know, we have never been in a position where we can just open up the borders and let anybody uh, come through uh, whenever they want and uh, to whatever degree they want. Uh, you know, as a nation, we cannot afford to do that. Uh, we understand that people are coming in for economic reasons. Uh, we want people to succeed as well and have every opportunity, but we just want them to pursue, the, pursue those avenues legally. For Humvee, being undocumented forced him to attend college in Mexico. He says, however, that he wants to return to the States to further his education. I think I can achieve some goals in Mexico, but not all my goals that I want. That's why I'm thinking about after I finish my bachelor's degree in architect here in the university, I'm thinking of going up to the U.S. to finish my master's degree. Things are different for Maria, however. While she feels privileged to be receiving an education, she won't return if she is ever deported. For like some part, I feel privileged for being like in college because I know even though I won't be able to work, I can go to Mexico, but I know I have my degree. Um, just, I don't know. If I get deported, I don't think I'll be, I'll be coming back. Just because the things that I've heard, like the people suffered crossing the border and stuff, it's, it scares me just to think about it. So I think if I ever get deported, I'm not coming back. I don't know how I'm gonna do it over there because I'm so used to being here. This is Ryan Montano reporting.